if you're new to GarageBand on Mac but aren't quite sure how to get started, in this video I'll share what I think you should do when you first download the program. If you haven't downloaded GarageBand onto your Mac yet, head to the Mac App Store, type GarageBand into the search box, and when it shows up in the search results, just tap on Get. Wait for it to download and you'll be ready to go. GarageBand will usually open up the last project you were working on, but if it's your first time opening up the program, you'll come to the new project window. You can get back to this window at any time by clicking File in GarageBand's toolbar and selecting New. From the new project window, you can open a new project, open a project you were recently working on, open an instrument lesson, open an artist lesson, I'm Ryan, lead singer of One Republic. Or open a new template which has certain instruments or features already set up for you. By clicking on the details drop down, you can access project settings. Here you can change the tempo of your project, the key and time signature, and if you have an audio interface connected, adjust your input and output setup. All of these settings can be changed from inside your project at any time. So don't worry about this stuff too much if you're just getting started and want to get stuck in. When you hit choose in the previous project menu, the main GarageBand window will open and you'll be prompted to select a track type. Creating a MIDI track allows you to access and play all of GarageBand's built-in instrument sounds, either with an attached USB keyboard or by using your typing keyboard and GarageBand's musical typing feature. To use a USB keyboard, just plug it into one of your Mac's available USB ports. GarageBand will automatically detect it and you can start playing right away. For musical typing, click on Window in GarageBand's toolbar, then select Musical Typing. To change the instrument's sound, open GarageBand's Library window by clicking on the Library icon in the top left of the screen. You can use the menus to select different instrument types and then individual patches. Up at the top here, the small drop down menu allows you to filter instrument sounds by sound pack. More on how to access all of these sound pack sounds a bit later on. Clicking on the editor button opens the editor window, and in a MIDI track, you can edit the notes you've recorded using this piano roll. and even draw in notes by hand by pressing and holding the command key on your keyboard and then clicking where you want to create your notes. The drummer track allows you to add virtual drummers to your project. These drummers will generate and play a drum kit or drum machine pattern based on criteria like your project's tempo, time signature and settings you've selected. When you create a new drummer track, a drummer region will also be created. You can loop that drum region by hovering your cursor over the right edge of the drummer region until you see the loop icon then drag and drop to the required length. Or you can extend the length of the region overall by again hovering over the edge of the region, but this time dragging the region to size when you see this symbol. 
Opening the library window in a drummer track allows you to select from different genres and different drummers from within those genres. Every drummer has a unique style and plays a unique kit by default. Anders, for example, plays hard rock inspired patterns on a heavy hitting drum kit. Whereas Ronnie plays electro trap beats on a seismic electronic drum machine. Opening the editor window in a drummer track allows you to fine tune your drummer's performance. You can select from different presets. Adjust the velocity and complexity of the performance. Add or remove different parts of the kit that they'll play. And loads more. If you want to record yourself, either your voice or an acoustic instrument, like a guitar, through your Mac's built in microphones or through an audio interface and an external microphone, select the mic or line audio track. If you don't have any gear attached to your Mac and just want to use its built in microphones to record, hit the big red button and off you go. If you want to use a microphone to record yourself, it's pretty straightforward to get set up really. Attach your microphone to your audio interface, then attach your audio interface to your Mac. GarageBand will recognise that you've attached it and ask if you want to use it. Then just hit record. I do have a more in-depth rundown on how to set up and use an audio interface with GarageBand on Mac. I'll link that below if you want to check it out. In the library pane, you'll find audio presets that apply different effects like compression, reverb and pitch correction to your recorded audio. In the editor window, you'll find pitch correction controls for vocal recordings and the option to reverse your audio amongst other things. The guitar or bass audio track works in pretty much the same way as the mic or line audio track, only it's set up with library patches tailored towards those attaching guitars or bass guitars to GarageBand. You can use the library to select different guitar focus presets. GarageBand also has a really handy built-in tuner that is actually surprisingly accurate. Click the tuning fork button at the top of the GarageBand window to open it up. GarageBand for Mac comes loaded with lots and lots of Apple made audio and MIDI samples that you can use to add drum beats, bass lines, rhythm parts, synth leads and other sounds to your project. You can quickly find loops in the loop browser and preview them to find the ones you want to use in your song. You'll find the loop browser button in the top right of the GarageBand window. You can use the loop browser's filtering capabilities to single out a particular instrument, genre or mood. From here you can preview individual loops by simply clicking on them. When you found a sample you like, hold down your mouse button or trackpad and drag it across to the other side of the GarageBand window. It's helpfully signposted drag Apple loops here.
When you first download and install GarageBand from Mac, you may notice that a lot of the instrument patches and loops are greyed out. You can access these missing sounds and patches by clicking on the download arrow next to their names. Going through them all one by one would be a pretty time consuming process, luckily there is a way that you can get everything all at once. Click on GarageBand in GarageBand's toolbar, then hover over Sound Library. You'll have several options here. You can install Essential Sounds, which will add a basic selection of additional loops and instrument patches. You can download all available sounds, which will fill in all of the blanks, plus give you access to additional sound pack content. Or you can reinstall the entire sound library. This is a handy option if some files get messed up or deleted on your Mac and you just want to reinstall everything. Provided you have ample storage space, I'd recommend selecting the download all available sounds option. This is quite a sizable download, so depending on your internet download speed, you may want to stick the kettle on while this is going on. Doing this will also allow you to view and select instruments and loops from specific sound packs in the library window and in the loop browser. Right, that's what I think you should do first when you download GarageBand for Mac. If you enjoyed this video, please give that like button a good hard slap. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for more info on getting started with GarageBand for Mac, watch this next. <laughs>